Okay, thank you for having me, Michael. It's an honor to speak in front of you guys. So um, um, I'm going to build on uh, Aniket's uh, great talk and background on, on blockchain. So I won't get into too much into the general motivation. But generally speaking, as you, most of you know, blockchain was introduced in 2008 by Satoshi Nakamoto. And the, 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 the relation between Bitcoin and blockchain is that blockchain is the technology, the platform above which Bitcoin is implemented. And mainly blockchain is an engineering breakthrough. It, it uses primitives that were known by then, but Satoshi Nakamoto tailored them in a very uh, novel way uh, to, to create blockchain. And perhaps there are other applications. We spoke about it before. And if you're following what happened to, to, to the market in the last weeks, then in the beginning of May, the market cap of cryptocurrencies was about $30 billion. And since then, it tripled and more. It's now over the $100 billion. It's kind of a hot topic now. Um, so, um, but, but unfortunately, there are great, great problems to the system. So generally, the motivation for this work is that blockchain doesn't scale. Bitcoin uh, specifically tr uh, processes about seven transactions per second. Other systems uh, have dozens of transactions per second. But that's around the order of magnitude of throughput, TPS. That's the formal uh, throughput measure. And if you're following the community, the online community, in the Bitcoin community, you'll know there's a heated debate in the community between the miners and the core devs. The miners are pushing for large throughput, for big block big blocks. Of course, they want more revenue, so larger throughput means more revenue for the miners. And then the core devs were much more security oriented. They fear that the, that the system will um, break apart or be compromised if you have large throughput. And so I'm, I, I chose this picture. If you know, what, if you know how the community is now, um, the, the dynamics, this is not over dramatic to envision Bitcoin as, imagine Bitcoin as this slow and heavy truck that's on the verge of falling from a narrow cliff. There's also conflicts and peace talks and, and agreements they're signing. Coming September, they should initiate a, uh, the New York Agreement, if you know it, what I'm referring to. So there are really political um, factions here. OK. So the general agenda of, of, the res of our research is, first of all, to understand better the scalability security trade-off of blockchain. Um, that's perhaps previous work, and then understand whether this uh, trade-off is inevitable or not. Then we want to design better, better systems that alleviate this trade-off and are scalable. And I, I should mention that th these works are not just theoretical, they're practical. Uh, um, actually, uh, developer groups in the industry that really want to implement these protocols, so this is not just uh, theory. So the main agenda is breaking the chains of, uh, of blockchain protocols. OK. So as you heard, the high level design of, Bitco of blockchain is the replicated uh, state approach, the re replicated ledger approach. Whenever there's a transaction in the system, instead of uh, informing only the bank or a central entity, you publish it to everyone in the, in in the network. And they copy, they, they maintain a local copy of this transaction, and they embed, it, they embed transactions, new transactions in the, letter, in the ledger, and the transaction ledger essentially represents the state of all valid transactions in the system. And just uh, remember for, for the rest of the remainder of the talk, sorry, the time here flows from the left to the right. It's a bit confusing. The pointers um, are from the right to left, but uh, this is the first block in history, and then the last block in the history is on your right. OK, and last comment, there's, there are two types of nodes in the network. There are active nodes, which are always online, uh, full nodes or minor nodes. And they are they're in, uh, in charge, responsible on extending the ledger. And there are also user nodes, which only plug into the network whenever they need to. OK, so in general, what's, what's the main observation um, regarding blockchain? So, we observe that um, the, the blockchain structure is robust only because it really uh, comprises a single chain. 
So when the, th when the throughput is low, meaning, uh, you, you process only several transactions per second, say 10 transactions per second, then you have uh, low frequency of blocks. In Bitcoin, it's 10 minutes. And then you can say that network, network delays are negligible. And when they are negligible, then the longest chain rule is really a good rule. So Anik had showed you the longest chain rule. If there will be uh, other blocks here that are not part of the longest chain, they will be discarded. And the, the, the blockchain, in, in peace days, in normal, normal behavior of the system, um, the next block will, be, will extend the longest chain. We have enough time and we're slow. That's how Bitcoin is secure nowadays. However, if you want to increase the throughput, you can either, either create uh, more frequent blocks or either create or create uh, larger blocks. But in either case, you'll end up having much more blocks that are not created on top of the longest chain. Okay, so the red blocks here are blocks that honest, naive, uh, honest, innocent miners created uh, were not, they ha didn't have an updated worldview regarding the state of the longest chain. So they created these blocks um, in parallel to the longest chain. And the longest chain will dictate that these blocks should be discarded and ignored. And in particular, all the transactions in them are ignored. So this is also a waste, this is both a waste of throughput and of security. These blocks contrib contribute nothing to the protocol according to the Bitcoin protocol. Okay? So um, essentially what happens, let's say I'm a, a miner, I'm the miner faction and I want to push for 100 megabyte blocks, a large blocks, a large throughput. Then the core devs, the security oriented guys will say, you know what, if we'll increase the blocks, increase the throughput, we'll have much more, much, much larger orphan rate and we'll have a waste and we'll be much more compromised to manipulations by attackers. So that's the general trade-off um, we are reaching. Okay, so to see this from the high level, you, there's, there are three phases to the thru, uh, three possible phases to the transaction throughput in Bitcoin. Today, Bitcoin is in, in the safe green zone where there's a very modest throughput and the protocol is secure. It's in the orders, order of magnitude of tens of transactions per second. And then in the red zone, you have the extreme throughput of hundreds of thousands of transactions per second, which the network will probably uh, won't be able to support. And we are aiming at somewhere in between, I'm not sure exactly where, but in the, in the high throughput uh, zone where you process t uh, thousands of transactions per second, maybe tens of thousands of transactions per second, and the protocol, um, but here the, the Bitcoin protocol is insecure. So when you say the network is congested, what do you suppose that there was a security solution, what does it mean for the network? That, that nodes uh, uh, have, the, their buffers are exploding. So if 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 mine if nodes because in, of processing power? No, because you, if you have hundreds of thousands of transactions per second, they're in regular nodes. I mean, you don't want to assume that if you have designated nodes that are really powerful, of course they can process hundreds of thousands of transactions per second. But if you want a decentralized system that also uh, weak players can participate at, then they won't be able to process this volume. So a, a transaction is typically a half a kilobyte. So this would imply um, fifty thousand. 50 megabyte per second. So you can support it if you want, but then your honest, honest nodes are a strict subset of what you had before. Um, so again, th the yellow zone is what we want to, to eliminate. We want to we wanna reach this zone, this, this, uh, this state where you can support whatever the network supports. But today in Bitcoin, that's not the case. You, you suppress the throughput in order to maintain uh, to, to maintain the security. And uh, just for comparison, a visa processes tens of, tens of thousands of transactions per second. So in peak times, even, even more. But that's, that's the area we want to, to, we want to get at. But I mean, the green zone can go back. Here it's still, the protocol is still insecure. So when you're saying... Oh, um, yeah, that's a typo. I mean, yeah, I just... The goal is... Thank you, Or. <laughs> what? The goal is for you to be secure. I mean, current Bitcoin will not. Yes. Okay. I'll wait f uh, further comments Call from you.
OK, so um, the outline of the remainder of this talk is as follows. First, I wanted to describe uh, the correct uh, uh, framework for uh, layers of blockchain. So this is just my view of how, how to uh, divide the blockchain system into layers. And this is uh, deliberately different than Bitcoin's design um, or a, a conceptual design of the system. And then I will show how Bitcoin, uh, because it deviates or it didn't follow this agenda, then it has the scalability problem. Then we will uh, zoom into the consensus layer and speak about how, what should a consensus layer, uh, how does it look like in, in this framework. And finally, I want to present the Spectre consensus protocol, which we, uh, our team here um, uh, invented. And Spectre um, is, alleviates these, this trade-off um, and is, is scalable. It's in the green zone without the typo. OK, so here, here's uh, a crude division of of a blockchain into layers. It's just I'm, I'm um, flexible with the namings, the titles. But in general, you have the network uh, level. That's the bottom layer, and the data layer, and then the consensus and application layer. So um, the network layer is perhaps the most the simplest uh, layer. It's where the, the network lives, network node lives. Uh, it's, a, it's a peer to peer network. And then there's the transaction. The, the, where the, the, the data layer with the ledger is formed, the transaction le ledger is formed. And here, in our paradigm, the transaction ledger still has, could have conflicts. There's no consensus mechanism there. There's no conflict resolution, just a simple ledger. And then in the consensus layer, the, there's, this ledger is organized and ordered. Okay? And the consensus protocol is, is an abstract procedure which really is part of the application layer, and, the, and just it's good for my business to call it a separate layer because I invested time in consensus protocols, but it's really just a part of the, the first procedure that application runs. And then in the final layer, the application layer, there's economic meaning, there's meaning from extracting meaning from this ordered ledger. So to give this a more precise um, uh, description, let's take an example. So assume Alice and Bob want to transact. So how will this um, correspond to the layers? So um, let's say uh, um, Bob wants to pay Alice. So they will both, both plug into the network. And then Bob will publish the transaction. This is the data which, which is discussed in the, in the network. It will publish the transaction. Then some miner in the data layer will collect this transaction and embed it in some block in the ledger. But this still does not mean the transaction is valid in our paradigm. And then uh, Alice's wallet will begin with a view, listening to the ledger and, and um, lo uh, putting the, this, the, the corresponding block in its correct location within the, le the ledger. And then the, the wallet will, will tell Alice whether the transaction is valid or not. OK, so again, first you, you plug into the network. You publish a transaction. The transaction is embedded in some block. And then the block is given an order, a location in the ledger. And finally, reading this location, you interpret whether the transaction is valid or not. Okay, and now we'll, we'll get to this in more detail. OK, so again, the simplest layer is the network layer. It's the peer-to-peer -peer decentralized um, uh, net a network in the blockchain system. The topology is unregulated, dynamic. No one knows it. It keeps shifting. And uh, some nodes are always online, the user, the full nodes, the, the miners. And some nodes uh, plug, plug in whenever they want. Um, that you don't need to uh, um, declare identity in order to gain, to gain access to the network. And you don't need to say who you are. It's not in a strict sense of. Um, it's just to um, distinguish, it, distinguish it from a permission setup. Okay. OK. In the data layer, um, users push transactions to the, to, the, to the system. And miners collect it and pack it into blocks and publish these blocks. So here, there's uh, several transactions that users just suggested to the network. They want the network, the, the miners, to confirm it, and then miners uh, pack them in blocks in whatever uh, order they, they decide to. 
Um, and briefly um, going over the, the mining process, and Nick had mentioned it before. So block creation re requires heavy computation. Um, this computation is uh, uh, deliberately wasteful. It has no other purpose than this has no purpose other than wasting the miner's resources, computational resources. And the, the block contains a proof, a short proof, that indeed it uh, solved, it, it wasted computation in, in the sense that it solved a difficult to hard crypto puzzle. Okay, so this is the proof of work. So apart from having transaction in a, transactions in the block, the block contains a proof that it wasted resources on average. Okay, and this, is, this counters a civil attack, um, which where a miner can create multiple identities. So now we don't think of a miner as, um, we don't count a miner's power by counting how many nodes it created, but, ra but, but rather how, many comp how much computational power it controls. Um, okay, so, so, the, so going more uh, into the scalability issues in the data layer, so block creation is regulated by the protocol. There are two hard-coded parameters that are still connected to the data layer, to the, to the block, uh, to the block uh, mining process. One parameter is the block size. So we assume there's a, a hard-coded hard -coded, uh, parameter that says what's the upper bound and the allowed upper bound on the block size. And the second hard-coded parameter is the puzzle difficulty, how, uh, how difficult it is to create a block. So this is essentially the target that Anika described, the target, how many zeros essentially uh, you need to, to hash into. But that's, that's more detail. In the, the high level is what's the block creation that we are aiming at. So the creation rate that we are aiming at at Bitcoin, in Bitcoin is one, one block per 10 minutes. And specifically one block of one megabyte, which is roughly 2,000 transactions. Okay, so there are some, some different versions of the protocol, but Generally, this becomes between three and seven transactions per second. And notice that this, these parameters, which have, which they dictate the, the scalability, the, the throughput of the system, right? They are, they dictate how much transactions you process per second. These parameters belong to the data layer. They are um, part of the mining protocol, not of the consensus protocol. Okay, and this is this will prove cru a crucial dis distinction. Um, okay, finally, how, um, uh, uh, how are blocks structured? So the first uh, uh, stage of structuring a block, the first step is every block has to contain a pointer to previous blocks. Okay, and this pointer is essentially information that this block came after the, uh, the, the blocks it points at. So uh, here the, the, uh, the, the block, the big block on the right, he, had three point, he has three pointers to previous blocks, and these pointers uh, represent the fact that he, this block was provil, provably created after these blocks. Of course, it couldn't have been created before them because then the miner couldn't have known how to point into these blocks. So the pointer here is not a, a real pointer to the memory because it's a replicated uh, structure. It's rather uh, the hash ID, the hash of the previous block, which functions functions as a unique ID. Okay, so in the header of the block, there's a list um, of the hashes of previous blocks. And importantly, this is not the way Bitcoin works. This is part of our paradigm to think of a scalable blockchain. And because this, these pointers are, um, contain, are representing information about the time precedence of blocks, it's really important or ideally, we, we would have wanted these blocks, these pointers to be, the, the block to point at as many possible previous blocks as possible. Okay, we would like, um, ideally, if, if this miner that created that block had all the information needed, we would want him to point at all blocks that were created before him. What is the advantage of linking directly to all blocks rather than to linking to blocks, one block which links to the next one? So, uh, I, we, so I'll get to this now. So concretely, the mining protocol here in the data layer, the first rule would be to point at all previous blocks, but not at all, of course, just on those that weren't pre previously pointed at. Oh. So here's the, the next new, the new block. 
he, he doesn't he points only on these uh, two blocks because they weren't pointed at previously. Okay, you just said that it would we would preferably wanted to to point at all blocks, but. You yeah. Just these that are not indirectly blocked. Yeah. So what I mean is, we prefer we prefer to have as many information as possible. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, it, it sounds trivial, but in Bitcoin you don't do that, right? In Bitcoin you only you omit. I just thought maybe there's an efficiency advantage in also. Okay. Fine. Well. Okay. So so um, the mining protocol, the first rule would be simply you should uh, embed pointers to all the blocks that you that weren't pointed at before. This is the rule number one. Rule number two, publish your block as soon as possible, as fast as possible. Okay, so these are the two uh, uh, extremely simple instru mining instructions in our, uh, in our uh, paradigm. Um, just clarify, the rule two is also present in Bitcoin, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, um, th the important um, uh, uh, thing to observe here that we are not asking the miners to run any consensus mechanism. They do not need to reason about the transactions in, the, in, these, blog, in, the, in these blocks. They do not need to, to check whether they're conflicting or not. They're just mining. You can think of it as a dummy machine. They're just mining as fast as, 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 as fast as the network can support. And they do not mind at all about the contents of, their blo of these blocks. That's why these, these rules are much simpler than Bitcoin in the sense that a miner doesn't need to know anything almost. But, but what about the, the difficulty? Yes, so uh, the difficulty I, I, I pushed aside. Um, the miner does need to know how to mine a block. Yeah? You're right. So we need to, 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 uh, to, um, to adjust it like Bitcoin does. So the mechanism would be simply, I, I don't want to get into it, but in short, like Bitcoin does, right? Bitcoin just measures how long it took you to create 2016 blocks in your chain, right? So in this paradigm, it will be in your past. It's just a simple generalization of, uh, of Bitcoin's difficulty adjustment. Yeah, but this is, you can't really separate the layers. Like the this layer has, has nothing to do with the, with the, uh, with the contents of these, of these blocks. It's just with the headers of the block, right? You just need to know how many blocks were created, were mined. It doesn't need to know what, what, whether the contents were valid in, in a more uh, meaningful way. But wouldn't, if they'd say a, a miner published a block with two conflicting uh, transactions, yes. wouldn't they get a disadvantage? Why would he want to do that? I mean, he, the block wouldn't be accepted. It, it, in our paradigm, it will. And now I, I will get to it now. They become basically repeaters. Hmm? Miners, in, in this uh, new definition, are repeaters. They, yeah, but the, the message goes through. Yes, with, with some throttling of the messages uh, using proof of work. Still proof of work? Yes. No. Okay. Yes. So. No. Um, the old no, no, no. Yeah, so I said in, in we still have the in the data layer the proof of work which uh, it makes blocks uh, difficult to create. But the difference is that they don't need to, to know much more than that in order to create a block. OK, so pushing forward, how does the layer look like? How does the ledger look like in the, in the data layer? It, like a directed acyclic graph, a DAG. So this is the, our generalization over the blockchain. We envision a block DAG. And this is the first block in history. Again, the time flows from the left to the right. And at your right, there's the new block. And assuming this is the DAG it currently locally observes, this is, uh, assuming all the, blo the, the black blocks are, represent the entire set that this miner observes currently, he will embed pointers um, to all three leaves, leaves of this block. OK, so, so essentially you would say that, that uh, what Bitcoin is doing is just a special case of that, and therefore it's right. Um, well, if there's a fork, Bitcoin doesn't it's, it's a special case only if there's happen to be only one chain. Right? But if there's two chains, Bitcoin doesn't point at both. Bitcoin allows you only to point at the, at the winner, at the single winner of the... Of the right, uh, of course. Chain. But, but I'm saying the chain in Bitcoin is, of course, uh, also a dog. It's just in the trivial one case. Box. Yes. So, yeah. um, so essentially, you're saying that because Bitcoin is, is combining this consensus of 
and, and this uh, past forming. So yeah, so it's not, a, it's not a totally new paradigm I'm presenting here. It's just a nuanced way of um, uh, what comes before what, the, the consensus or the ledger. Yeah, so it really follows most of Bitcoin's primitives and, and uh, line of thought. Um, nonetheless, there are some, some uh, important differences in w w when uh, you also point at off-chain blocks, even in Bitcoin. You, you reduced cost for attackers and such. I don't want to get into it. Yes, but that's, that's a correct comment. Um, I think it's my next slide, actually. Yes. Uh, so one question I think uh, that's clear to uh, So we, there are sometimes some, on the previous slide, yes. some nodes have two uh, arrows which are pointed to them because those two new blocks were not knowing about the existence of other blocks. Yes. And that's why that one output block got pointed to something. Yes, so that's, so that's a good comment. So the width, uh, the width of the DAG is a function of the, the block creation rate and block size. So if, if at an average in one unit delay, you create five uh, blocks in parallel in the, in the network, then you will have an average width of five. These blocks didn't hear about one another when they were created. Yeah. I know that you want to talk about that later, but what is your uni unit of delay? You mentioned this unit, right? So how do you define that? That depends upon your network, right? Yes. So um, I will want to talk about it later. Oh, that's fine. But <laughs> Yeah, but, but the, the important thing, it, the, uh, miners are agnostic to this unit of delay. That's important. Oh. Th that's the main achievement. We don't want miners to, be, to suppress themselves uh, to maintain some bound on this unit of delay. Um, instead, the users, the wallet or the application layer, will observe this DAG externally and will, and will assume some bound on the network delay, on the network unit of delay. But the miners themselves do not need to consider that. They only need to consider the network capacity. How much can the network support? This is the main goal we set out to, to, uh, to achieve. And uh, following up your, your comment, yes, so th this is a, uh, a generalization of, of Bitcoin's um, method. When, there's no, when the network delays are negligible, then honest miners have um, a create a chain. And then the next block will probably know about all previous blocks and therefore it will extend the chain, okay? Of course, there are some differences when attacker tries to fork, but that's the main uh, idea. Okay, so how, is, how, is the, the, how does the con uh, consensus layer um, define or how does it uh, precisely look? So we, the, the main thing to you need to achieve when you have a DAG is a linear order over the blocks in the DAG. Okay, that's, that's, that's the definition of the consensus uh, protocol in our uh, framework. You just uh, take a, as input a DAG and output a linear order over, over the, its blocks. Um, and that should be consistent with our previous linear orders. You cannot <laughs> reorder. You complete the partial order. Yeah, exactly. So um, I would think of it as a as a feature uh, you can decide to, uh, to uh, implement, and we also decided to implement, but I, I'm not sure it's, it's a pre, pre the, it's a prerequisite to, to define the, the framework. But I agree, uh, the only reasonable orders, orderings will, will be topological, will comply with the DAG topology. Okay, so again, this, it's not a real separate layer. This, this protocol is run locally at the application uh, who's, who, which observes the, 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 the ledger. And it's sort of a consensus protocol that no, no one interacts with. I wish to disagree with you, because if you will not preserve the, the partial order, oh, okay. you can get into a situation where a miner, a bad miner, can, you know, <laughs> can actually support situation of uh, double spending. Yes, yeah, so that's... So that it would not be a bad consensus. No, so, so there's a desire... But if you allow... But not for long. Long. No, not for uh, it's exactly for long, forever, because it you will burn it. You will burn. The, you you will actually allow him if he's colluding with the, with a double spender. Yes. Then I am paying your sin, then I'm paying you, but then I get it into the wrong blocks, right? And then and I'm co cooperating with the miner, and then the miner is signing my and and when once the cons consensus is also giving preference to block number seven. Then actually, I'm paying your sins, and then you get, uh, and then Yossi gets the money, 
you, yeah. you, so it, it's hard, it's difficult for me to defend uh, a, a protocol that, that we didn't define yet. So if someone will present a protocol that uh, some, some, uh, in some rare occasions uh, doesn't respect the topology, I, I don't know that it will never uh, be able to prove that this protocol is secure. I, I agree that that's the, re that's the you, it's easier to, to implement topological compliant uh, protocols, but I'm not sure it's like, it's, uh, it's necessary to, to, uh, um, to wrap this uh, framework. But I'm, I'm flexible, it's just uh, method methodological. Okay, so, so uh, this is, so the, the consensus protocol, sh the ordering protocol should be uh, tolerant to uh, Byzantine nodes. And again, the Byzantine nodes are, are limited by their computational resources, not by the number of the nodes that they, are, they um, uh, open in the network. Okay, and why do we want um, an, 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 an agreed linear order? Um, the reason is that it is necessary and, and it is sufficient at least uh, uh, an ordering to know how to interpret the, le the transaction ledger. So for instance, if I have two transactions in two blocks that are not related to the topologically, TX and TX bar, and you cannot co-accept them because they double spend, then you have to know which one came uh, before which. And once you know that, you can say, okay, the first one is confirmed, the other ones are rejected. And so in this way, the application can take the, the ordered ledger, sorry, and reason about the status of, of uh, confirmed transactions. Okay, so I hope this is clear. The order, the ordering is, is equivalent to, to a, a reaching consensus on the state of all confirmed transactions. Okay? Okay, so here's um, getting into the application layer. The, this, what, I'm, what I'm, I'm envisioning is that these, this uh, order ledger will be um, a host to multiple protocols uh, and multiple um, uh, communities. So as Anika had mentioned, there's trans, uh, Bitcoin transactions, uh, per, um, also Ethereum smart contract. Several protocols can, can uh, use the same DAG fabric. And maybe even a secret uh, encrypted protocol where some, um, some uh, secret agents or some uh, community of um, uh, some agency wants to use this DAG in order to uh, organize their instructions to their agency. And, and um, they just use the DAG to hash, to, to timestamp and uh, verify their their instructions, but the, my, no one knows what's in there. Okay, so this is an extreme example of how you can use uh, several protocols on the same DAG. Every protocol will need, will, the only thing it needs from the DAG is an ordering over its, the events in it. Once you have an ordering, those who know how to read the protocol, who are interested in reading the protocol, will have their way in the application layer. Okay, so this is like a long-term vision for how a, a correct blockchain should look like. Okay, questions? Okay, so wrapping up this, uh, this framework, we have the network layer, the data layer, the application layer, and the question is which layer should be responsible for restricting, restricting the, the, the throughput? So again, the throughput is technically restricted here, right? Miners um, uh, are create blocks in a given frequency and a given block size, but who should determine these parameters. So in Bitcoin, these parameters look uh, to the wrong direction. They look to the consensus and they say, okay, if we use uh, two, two large blocks, two, two, two frequent blocks, we will, the consensus protocol will no longer be secure. And therefore the entire system, the, the throughput here is restricted by the upper, the upper layer. And I argue that the correct way would be to, for the data, layer to be restricted only by the network capacity. And then application layer should, be, should work for, as long as the network is not congested and is, is, is functioning well, everything should work uh, as planned. So this is, this is the, the, the goal. Okay, so the scalability should depend on network capacity, not on the protocol. The protocol should not be the barrier to scalability. Okay, so the desired properties traditionally from consensus protocol are safety and liveness. 
Um, safety means that the order, uh, in, our, in our context, that the order cannot be reversed by an attacker. And uh, liveness means that um, the order between each, any two blocks is decided sooner rather than later. Um, in a more uh, familiar language, safety means you can't double spend. And liveness means that you can uh, confirm transactions uh, fast enough. So you can't deny, you can't perform, execute a denial service attack. Okay, so these are the two properties we want to achieve. And in, in a more general uh, phrasing, you want honest blocks that uh, good behavior, good behaving blocks to not be, not be preceded by bad blocks. And a bad block is a block that, that wasn't created according to the rule of having pointers to all the recent leaves, leaves of the DAG. Okay, this, is, this is a bad block, and we want, we want uh, uh, bl good blocks to be first in the order. Okay, so let's do some warm up of how to, uh, g getting you through our research path. The main, the first, um, I, I hid here some attacker, and I would um, pr present you the challenge of finding which chain here was uh, mined by an attacker. Okay, so this is a, a, an easy task. <laughs> the bottom line, because this, the, the, these, these chains, w the, these blocks weren't published, right? There's no incoming links, links to them outside their own, and they, they didn't point at the DAG. <laughs> the picture is deceiving, as you will now see. Who's the attacker now? So the picture hints that uh, this chain is the attacker, but if you count blocks, you see that really this chain represents the, the honest network, and these were created by an attacker. We have here seven blocks or so that were created on top of this block, and eight blocks that were created, created on top, atop it, and they're like separated. So if, you, if, if I ask you to guess which, which uh, sub-DAG was mined by an attacker, so assuming an attacker has less than 50%, this one belongs to the honest uh, nodes, and this one belongs to the attacker. Okay, find the attacker. I should look as well, I forgot already where he is. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, okay, so here, so someone has uh, an answer? Okay, so. No, they were created by, uh, no, they were created by honest miners. I, I know that because it didn't, it didn't uh, take too much time for this block to be published, only like, but, but I'll give a, a more, um, this, the middle chain was created by a miner that didn't point at other blocks. It's a, just, uh, there's no outgoing links to other blocks, this middle chain, so it's a censorship attack. There's a, a mining pool that only creates, only points at its references, its own blocks, but never acknowledges other blocks. This is a censorship attack. This is the middle chain. Okay. Finally, uh, another hidden attacker. Um, where's Waldo? Now it's the top chain. The top chain is, um, is, a, secret, is, a, is a secret chain. No one sees it. It has no outgoing links, which means that uh, some double spend is hidden there and the attacker waits before it, it, it attacks. It, it re reveals it. Okay, so you see there's no outgoing links from the rest of the DAG. So these, all, all of these scenarios are what we want to capture. We want, in all these scenarios, the blocks, to, the blocks of uh, Waldo to become later in the order. We don't, we don't want to allow them to proceed to, be, uh, to proceed on as blocks in the order. Okay, so this leads us to the Spectre protocol. Spectre is a joint work with Yoad here and, and uh, my, my supervisor, Avi Zohar. And um, essentially what we do in Spectre is we interpret the DAG structure as representing an abstract vote. So every block in the DAG, every block Z, has a vote whether he thinks X precedes Y or Y precedes X. And crucially, this vote is not something he, uh, the miner writes inside the block. We don't ask, ask his opinion. It's just an implicit, we use the stru DAG structure to reason what should be this block's vote. And the rules are, are essentially majority compliant. 
to be more specific, um, so some terminology, the blue, the, the blue blocks will be the past of Z, the green ones will be the future of Z, and these two blocks are incomparable to, to Z. We don't know whether they preceded it in order or succeeded it. Right, so we, we, we now want um, uh, um, to uh, extend the DAG topology order, as you asked us to, do, asked, ask us to um, and, and uh, provide a full order. Okay, so here's the rules of Spectre. It's a bit complex, complicated, but I think it's understandable. So the first, first rule would be for all blocks that are in the future of X, that, that know it, that heard about it, but didn't hear about Y, they, they, will, uh, they will say that X came before, uh, before Y. And all these blocks, the red blocks uh, um, here, they saw Y and they didn't see X, so, so they will vote Y precedes X. Okay? So again, if I see in my past only one block and I don't see the other, I vote that the one I see precedes the one I don't see. Um, okay, let's go on. Um, let's assume um, this yellow block uh, does not see uh, X or Y in its vote, so it will, it will take the vote of its majority in the future. So we'll count how many blue blocks are there in its future, how many red blocks uh, there are in its future, and we'll take the majority. So it will be colored blue, and similarly, I'm coloring here um, all the votes of uh, blocks. So you see this, this yellow block, the reason he, it, it votes, he needs to decide whether Y becomes before X or vice versa. Then it will decide that Y comes before X. You can count that it has um, five blocks in its future that are red blocks and four blue blocks. Yes. Couldn't this be dependent on the order you choose the unknown the blocks, like the one that these, these ones that are decided by the future, so some might affect each other. Right? No, they can't, because you always look on your, uh, at your future, so any topological traversal of the DAG will re result in the same output. But it's a good, it's a good uh, subtle question. Okay, so again, the, the basic rules are vote according to the majority in your past if you see one of these blocks, but, in your, but if you don't see neither, so if you see neither, then, then uh, agree with the majority in your future. Okay, so it's... But it could not, not be able to decide, of course, yeah, yeah. if you're the same length. So what? So you can break, break, uh, break uh, ties arbitrarily. You Just break the tie, then. Yeah. Because if you break the tie, then you don't have consistency, because I cannot... Because then... Breaking ties is easily like, like doing Bitcoin, right? In, in the longest chain, you just break ties. You flip so a you coin. You have a rule for breaking ties. It's not a just break whatever. Yeah, you can use the lexicographic hash of the block. Like, okay. Yes. Yes. Um, but we actually don't need, um, I, I don't want to get into details, but the, the, when you vote to, uh, regarding the future, blocks that you don't see, you don't really need to break ties. You can say they're even. And if you vote according to the past, if you have a past vote, then you do need to break the ties. Um, I, I can explain offline why, why, this is a, why this is a correct design of the protocol, but uh, not now. Um, okay, so, okay, so let's, let's see what happens um, just before the cascade. I, I, I pictured here the, the blue blocks and the red block. And what you can see here, the intuition here is that this chain of blocks wasn't published, right? It's a secret chain of blocks. And the fact that it wasn't public means that um, it has few, it doesn't have incoming links from honest nodes. Then assuming that attacker is weaker than 50%, it has less than 50% of the nodes, what will happen it, is that these blocks, which happened in the far past, these blocks were created like an hour before X and Y. These blocks will all be convinced that X precedes Y. Because X is part of a cluster of blue nodes that it was, it, was, uh, it was created honestly, was published immediately, then it's part of a, of a, a dense blue set, a dense good set, and therefore they, they will convince previous blocks that X is a good block, and then we'll have a cascade of the vote until the genesis block, the first block in history. So essentially, the first block in history will determine the vote forever, for, for, for all. It, this block takes a majority of all the DAG, and uh, he also uh, uh, 
agrees with, with, with this majority. And now the new block, which will be created on the right there, it will take the majority on its past. So I haven't said it how a, a block uh, that sees both x and y in his past, uh, both x and y in his past votes, then he will take a majority. So he will become blue. So it can happen that some miners who are, who hold those blocks are no longer working, right? So, but when you say the block, let's say Genesis block in Bitcoin is created Satoshi, and he's not going to vote. So yeah. So again, I'm, I'm a, this, it's, a, it's a good question. These blocks are are. Uh, we, we don't ask the miner what's its opinion. We don't, ask, uh, we don't even ask the block itself. We just consult the structure of the DAG to reason about what this block should vote. We force this block's vote uh, algorithmically. It's, there's no direct communication with anyone about it. It's, it's a local process on my computer, which I run. I take the DAG and I say, here's, a, here's the Genesis block say. What's its majority? Uh, it's just a technical algorithm. procedure, yeah. Because it's an algorithm, it's, 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 a, it's a kind of a new creature. It's a consensus algorithm that you run alone and you don't tell anyone about it. That's why it's an interesting uh, framework. I, do, I don't need to tell anyone that that was the output of the, system, of the, of the protocol because they see it as well. So any client and the application do it, uh, the task of the... Yes, that's what I said. It's not a real layer. I just want it for my business to be able to... Yes. yes. So, um, Remember again, you're doing this coloring to decide about a specific block? Yes, a, a specific pair of blocks. Pair of blocks. Pairs which, of which of the pair came first? Yes. Um, uh, how do I use it to, to for, a, for a full order? I will, I will touch this shortly. Okay, so, yes? Does this remain scalable when your what? graph grows? You, you, your graph will grow at some point, right? Does, yes. Does this remain scalable? You still need to compute that. Like, huh? Yes. So. So we have uh, efficient implementations for that. Itai Gera is a student, undergrad student here, an excellent student. He's, um, he's uh, uh, writing an efficient implementation of this. So I hope it will be available in GitHub uh, sometime soon. So it, the, the, our aspiration is that the computation will be a constant in the width of, in the, width of the DAG. OK. So uh, pushing forward, what, what, what does Spectre achieve? After this grandiose framework, Spectre does not achieve all the, th all the desired properties in the strict sense. So safety, uh, the order does become irreversible after a few seconds. Uh, blocks cannot cut in in line. So if you withheld your block, then you will be uh, later in the order. However, however, with respect to liveness, then two blocks that were created at about the same, that were published, sorry, at about the same time, I can, uh, hypothetically uh, execute an attack that balances them forever. Okay, so we call this the weak liveness property. Only if you withheld your block, then the order will be determined robustly. Otherwise, the, the order is uh, balanceable. You can make it non-robust. But we claim that this is a good enough property for, for the payment application. <coughs> yes, so you can, you can create a linear order of the DAG using this pairwise order. However, it will become robust only with respect to blocks that were um, of this sort, right? There's x and y. You see it took time for y to be published. And in this case, y will, y will succeed x, it will lose to x in a robust manner. Yeah? Robust Meaning that, um, when y will be published, the attacker won't be able to create many blocks to manipulate it and claim that y comes before x. Everyone will agree that x comes before y. However, if you take a block that was published in time proximity to x, it is possible, possible hypothetically to balance them forever. It's a hypothetical attack, but we want to be uh, frank about what we do achieve, what we do not achieve. OK? So doesn't that mean that you break the safety? No. So, so let's, let me go back. Let me, um, let me argue why this, is, this preserves safety, but does not uh, achieve a strict liveness. So safety, let's say Alice transacts with Bob. And Alice, uh, Bob wants to pay Alice. So Bob publishes a transaction to, to, the, to, the, block ch to the blockchain and our paradigm to the block there. So similarly to Bitcoin, Al Alice won't ag uh, accept this transaction immediately. right? Alice waits for a few confirmations. In Bitcoin, 60 minutes. And our framework is, 
it's um, a few seconds, but nonetheless, Alice will, will wait for the, for the ledger to, be, to build more additional blocks atop the transaction. Now, if during this time the attacker publishes a double spend, another block with a double spend, then uh, uh, Bob will, will see that and won't confirm the transaction. He will tell Alice, I see a double spend, take your money back or do, what, do, do, what, do with it whatever you want. I can't let you uh, take whatever you purchased. Right? So it's very similar to Bitcoin. Also in Bitcoin you have, when you swipe uh, your Bitcoin and credit card, the, the merchant waits for a few tens of minutes before confirming. So also here. Okay? So that's why safety is, uh, is guaranteed. Yeah, but if you wait like, I don't know, 10 more minutes and suddenly the order changes, so now... No, so, so, so the property... The, 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 the second the receiver gets the money and the first one is double spent and he closes it. No, so the, so the property we guarantee is that uh, after a few seconds that you uh, formally, the set of, the, take the blue block, the set of blocks that can ever precede the blue block closes very fast in a matter of seconds. So any block that wasn't pr published within seconds after the blue block was published will never precede it. And the probability is exponentially decaying like in Bitcoin. Okay, so that's a formal guarantee and we prove it uh, with, with great care. But um, with respect to lightness, again, two blocks that were generally published at the same time, I, I, don't, I don't guarantee that. But again, this doesn't harm honest users. Honest payers won't double spend visibly and uh, won't create visibly double spends, so they won't harm their, their funds. Okay, more questions about this? This is a subtle uh, consensus uh, property. Okay, so again, the, the, the guarantee is that as long as our Waldo uh, uh, acquires less than 50% of the computational resources, then blocks that it withholds, it withholds um, uh, succeed in the order, will lose in the order to honest blocks. Um, okay, so Spectre, importantly, Spectre remains secure regardless of the of, uh, network parameters. It is always converging, uh, always the, the, the aforementioned property is satisfied. Um, again, you only need to, to limit, uh, suppress the throughput to, to not congest the network. So this is, what, this is uh, what we were set out to achieve. Of course, there are more hardware um, considerations. I don't have time to get into this now. Maybe um, uh, others will uh, take a pick up of this challenge. Question. Uh, you talk about the no network delays and stuff. Uh, OK. Then, I mean, I know that it's a, the a synchronous communication is a theoretical model, but there you there you would have required two-third majority, right? So if you assume there is no delay, but I think inherently you are assuming some eventual synchrony or whatever. So, OK, so it's a good question. So. Uh, traditionally, you require two thirds of good good nodes. We only need to require we only need for fifty one percent of good nodes, so we break this threshold. And you're asking about synchronicity. So um, maybe I have uh, no. Okay, so remember the the network uh, layer and the the user application layer. The user when he when it wants to reason about the robustness of the of the DAG, it needs to assume some some upper bound on the delay diameter of the network. But it's its own belief. It doesn't need to convince anyone about the correctness of this belief. It's not a consensus. It's not hard code in the protocol. It's its own belief. It can adjust it um, as the network shifts, net sh network condition shift, shifts. So the U it's like the partial synchronous model of, of uh, consensus protocols. That when you want to analyze the, the protocol, you do need to assume some bounds. So when the user, the application, wants to analyze whether the payment is robustly uh, his own or not, it does need to introduce his own belief on the delay diameter. But in Bitcoin, the, this diameter is encoded, hard-coded inside the, co the protocol, right? 10 minutes is, is the assumption that in the, inside the protocol, right? That's the, that's, the, yeah, yeah, that's the main difference. Okay, so starting to wrap up, I'll just um, briefly go over Spectre's um, um, scalability properties. So again, how, how scalable is, is Spectre depends on the bandwidth, and, and not, it's not here, but also storage or other, other considerations, hardware considerations you have. So if you want to have to achieve 2,000 transactions per second, assuming a half a kilobyte for transactions uh, for, this, for the sake of this talk, then you need to require nodes to support one megabyte per second. 
But if you're willing to, uh, to require nodes to uh, support five megabytes per second, per second, then you can increase the throughput. Okay, and again, you, you can, maybe you can uh, support 100,000 transactions per second. But again, this will require 50 megabytes uh, of uh, bandwidth. So you decide what your network capacity, and then Spectre will be secure, and, and this, this, will, this will dictate the, the, the throughput. This is the correct design of blockchain. The, the data layer is only limited by the bottom layer, the network layer. And the protocol never introduces a new barrier. OK? I'll skip these graphs. This, this shows just that you get a good, good uh, 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 robustness and very fast. Um, there's also um, other properties. There's a better fairness because all blocks are rewarded. There's no discrimination between off-chain and on-chain blocks. All, chain, all, all blocks are somewhat equal. And just um, concluding, what more, what more, um, what's our research path? What do we think uh, can be more ach achieved uh, further? So first of all, of course, we, w we would want to get rid of the weak liveness property. And we want to make it strict. Uh, whether it's possible or not, we're not sure. Maybe there's some impossibility here that you can't um, uh, achieve, a, you can't mimic a, a real consensus without introducing a, an explicit network delay parameter into the, in the protocol. It corresponds with uh, previous works from the 80s and 90s. All different thresholds. What? All different thresholds. Or different thresholds. You, you mean like from the one half to one third? Yeah. Yes. So maybe, uh, so uh, again, Spectres achieves uh, resilient 50% attacks. Maybe we can't, we can't achieve that if you want full order. Uh, storage. If you want, one, if you want to expl uh, utilize your entire bandwidth Let's say every, every bit is, is, a, is a, an efficient bit of information. Then if you want to uh, utilize all your bandwidth and, and you have one megabyte per second, it's roughly 86 gigabyte uh, per day to store. <coughs> Who will store these nodes? So Aniket um, hinted there may, might be think clients and pruned full nodes and, and um, archive nodes or, or whatever. It's a good question how to design the system. Um, again, as Aniket mentioned, when you want to ha introduce privacy measures, then they, have, they introduce new burden on the network, on the storage. A confidential transaction is about two kilobytes of, of um, unused information. And perhaps, and another uh, thing on our, in our path is to think how to adjust these, uh, these uh, ideas and this, this agenda to non-proof-of-work based protocols. So for instance, proof of stake, which uh, Yossi will present today, I think. Um, is, is does not uh, require computation in order to create blocks. It will be interesting to see whether you can use the same, the same ideas to scale the system. Um, and finally, just to, to wrap this up, the, the take-home message from this, from this line of work is that scalability should depend, should depend on the network, and block, block DAGs are inherently with, uh, compliant with uh, this framework and, and are scalable. Spectre is just one way to do this. Maybe there are others. We're definitely working on it. Um, OK, thank you.